The Ethan Allen Summer Sale is going on now at the area's only Ethan Allen Gallery, Georgetown Manor, 56 Naughty Monroe. The sale ends Saturday, September 5th. Runaways, where are they now? Tonight at 8. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly welcome Jerry Lewis, right here. Uh, Jerry Lewis has certainly woven himself into the uh, fabric of uh, the American flag over the last uh, 20 years, and I say that in a very positive way. One of the most uh, recognized faces in America, he's recognized everywhere, as a matter of fact, uh, where they show uh, his movies and is hotter than ever in Europe. And you have my congratulations for a career that's certainly uh, in the most competitive arena, uh, done very well by you, as you have by it. We are here, however, to discuss a more serious and not altogether funny uh, issue of how we speak to those who are disabled, those who have catastrophic illness, birth anomaly, those who can't afford to meet the bills that go with having uh, illnesses that require long hospitalization or institutional care or uh, professional attention during disability. Jerry Lewis presides over the most single most successful fundraising event in this country, the Muscular Dystrophy Telethon, which as you know happens on Labor Day, originating from La Las Vegas and carried by a number of stations on the Love Network. Mr. Lewis, as much as he's been honored and awarded and appreciated for what he's done, is not without some controversy. And he knows about this, and uh, I'd like to see if we can't today speak to some of those issues. One of the charges leveled, Jerry, is that the, uh, the telethon, among other things, seems to, tr seems to suggest that the only people who are disabled are children, and that they, are, that they, that th they become on the telethon objects of pity. This has riled many people who are working very hard to change the consciousness of Americans in terms of their attitude toward the disabled. They don't want to be thought of as objects of pity. They want to be thought of as people who they really are, who are capable of making contributions. And however well-intentioned, you make worse this whole notion that somehow they're helpless children who need our love, attention, and pity, rather than, uh, rather than making room for them to take their place in society and discharge the responsibilities that they otherwise might be able to do. Are you telling me that's what I do? That's what they suggest you do. And they are who? Well, among other people, <laughs> the, uh, the Coalition, the coalition. for uh, Disabled People, the mm -hmm. Disability Rights Center Incorporated. And I must say, I don't find their criticism of you to be um, visceral and personal. And I, don't, I don't take it personally. Okay, fine. I understand where they're coming from. But I think that if you watch very closely, you'll find that we never, ever exploit my kids in any way. We let the people know that a child has been given a dirty deal. Not pity. We do not pity them. For that matter, I can introduce you to many, many of my kids who hold a greater pity for us that we cannot deal with their problem and that they're handling it okay. Many of them will say to you, I'm not crippled, I'm inconvenienced. And that's courageous. That's stunning. It's exquisite as far as I'm concerned. The but people you're talking about, the coalition, I have great empathy for them, and they don't want pity, as you or I would not like to have pity. Right. But they are taking a position in such a generic sense. They're generalizing. Yeah. And you have to remember that we had a dystrophic child 25 or 28 years ago whose life expectancy was eight months. And because of the telethon, we now can hold a child alive and well and hopeful for 12 to 15 years. That's what comes from those dollars. Uh, the other question that uh, I, I know you've spoken to before is, uh, who determines who gets a telethon? And what if you don't have a popular entertainer speaking for the illness that you happen to have afflict your family? Why don't we have a cystic fibrosis telethon with as many people on the love? Why don't we? All right. Why don't we also have one for uh, juvenile arthritis? Why don't we? All right. Now, which, which telethons does the general manager of the station, who is being asked to carry it, mm -hmm. will not be carried by that station? And what criteria should he use to determine which 
which charity please don't get the benefit of his airwaves his criteria should be the humanistic criteria he should carry them all there are only 10 or 12 situations in the country today that need to be addressed they should all be carried. You're saying are, there are only 10 or 12 diseases that deserve telephone. No, that's not what I said. But off the top of my head, there are 10 or 12 situations that should be represented to raise funds to help them. And all you're asking the broadcaster to do is to give up 12 of his 365 days. This is a good place we live in. Yeah. It's a good life. Yeah. I think you have to put something back. That's not such a big deal. Not in today's television right. market. Should uh, Sickle Cell get a telephone? Why not? If Should they've got somebody that's got the kind of guts, drive, dedication, love, and affection that I had. I went and battled to get 200 in stations. That's true, you did. WGN included. Right, which carries your telephone. The station which on which you proudly... carries you. And carries me, right. Right. Um, uh, for sometimes a lot more charitable reasons than they carry you, I should say. Um, the, the, uh, let's, uh, should should Tay-Sachs disease get a telephone? Why not? Um, if there is somebody that cares and can communicate to the American public, the public in this country, as I see it, are fulfilled and satisfied by being able to there but for the grace of God go I, contribute their time, their energy. You are depriving healthy, meaningful, loving people the one greatest gift God has given us, and that is to share, communicate, yeah. break bread with, right. not look at a crippled child and say, well, that's too bad, but what can I do to help them? Right. Uh, I don't think anybody suggested that we shouldn't make ourselves available, not, and, and the word help troubles some people because that gets back to this paternalistic sort of approach to There's disability. nothing wrong with help. There's nothing wrong with that. I need help in a variety of ways, but, and they may not all be based on right. ambulatory. But let's just understand, I'm not demanding you agree with their position. Let's just understand that it'd be better if they made this point, but the, what they're saying is the you'll never walk alone, melancholy, tear in the eye, oh, isn't this uh, awful, we've got to do something about it's, this approach. It's real, it's honest. What are you talking Emotionally about? Emotionally cripples the people who are disabled and makes them feel that they are objects of pity and keeps them from pulling themselves up. You're talking about 25 people in a coalition that have no voice and that are almost like the rest of the human condition, jealous and envious that they're, but for the grace of God go I. They don't have a telethon that relates to what they are talking about. They don't have the position that my kids have on Labor Day. They're very special, very meaningful to the hearts and minds of everyone in this country, and they're making waves. Because they are disabled doesn't make them any less devious, my friend. And because you're disabled, that has nothing to do with morality, principle, or integrity. I defy them to battle me one-on-one, -on -one, and because they're in a wheelchair, it doesn't change anything. Right. I'll turn from the love and affection and my need to help a crippled child right to a hostile attack on someone else disabled because they're using that rather than recognizing they're in trouble and someone cares. Yeah, but see, even the attitude that you express now, Jerry... Why, do I sound hostile? Yeah, it makes... <laughs> It makes their point. There is this suggestion that to criticize what you do is to somehow not care for your kids. And they want you also to know that they're not your kids. That however loving and well-intended you are, the whole notion of my kids has a possessive paternalism that about it. That was their title given to me. They were the ones that chose the song. Okay. They want me to sing You'll Never Walk Alone. That's meaningful to them. And it also works. It happens to be important to them. How it's much did you raise last them. year? How much did you raise last year? $31 million on the telethon, but $77 million throughout the course of the year. Uh, that's an incredible sum yeah. of money. There's nobody's over, arguing with your went success. Went over $400 million last right. year, right. all gone to research, patient care, and for no matter what parents have in the bank, we will still pay for the wheelchair, therapy, medicine, transportation. We do it all. Should companies use crippled children as marketing vehicles? We'll They're give not. a dime They're if not. you buy a hamburger, if you shop at 7 to 11, if you buy beer or uh, all of those. Phil, Doesn't I read your you? book. I read that whole chapter, and I have to tell you, you were not informed. You were ill-informed. You didn't take the time to examine what you were talking about, and you, therefore, for the first time I know you, made yourself look like well, let's get the book out quick. 
Right. Straight. Right. You're yeah, we should say straight. that. In my biography, I devote a chapter to charities in which I suggest that they're inefficient, competitive, and in effect, a, a mountain gives birth to a mouse. That after you pay the society orchestra and all those guys sit there behind their long cigars and the doctor gets up and gets $40,000 for the hospital, half of the fat cats there could make that check and not miss the change and we wouldn't have to do all this fine of the cake and the centerpieces and the... That was one of the points I made. Yeah. I also what said... what you didn't find out, I, Phil, was that the General Foods Corporation has been giving to those in need for a hundred years. I went to the chairman of the board and the board of directors of General Foods and said, come out of the closet. Let the American public know that the corporate structure is not heartless. That's how I got 17 of the biggest corporate structures to work with me, align themselves with me. Yeah. They've all been giving. But now that I announce that they do that, a guy like you writes in a book, you shouldn't sell hamburgers with a crippled kid. I You're wrong. I said, you didn't do your homework. Oh, okay, straighten me out then. Here's your chance. I'm not through yet. Okay. <laughs> These are people that care and never knew how to show that care. So they were almost anonymous by design. Anonymous, giving hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. The Reynolds Company, that has nothing to do with us, I've never even met these people, but in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, that entire community is, is nurtured by the Reynolds Corporation. The school, the orphanage, the hospitals, the plasmapheresis, the, the, the kind of stuff that they contribute to this place where all of these people have made cigarettes, make fortunes for them, whether that's a gift back because you've made us an empire. I don't care the why of somebody doing something. My, my little friend over here doesn't want to know the why, but he's got a wheelchair and it's electric. And he presses a button and he moves around as good as you and me. He don't want to know where that came from. He's got it. But... And Who? without them, he ain't got it. Uh, just a couple of questions about, uh, you know, about the promotion. If you take dance lessons from Donahue Dance, we'll give, for every lesson, a dollar to muscular dystrophy. A couple of questions. Um, first of all, uh, who's monitoring that? Who's auditing that? And it's how public do, information. Uh, but how many, how many people are exposed to the amount of, of sales that are generated by the plea uh, which is enhanced because the, of the notion that you're doing something good as well as doing something A guy good. wants to go and learn to dance. And he, and he does so, something for MD. Wait, rather than go to Rose and Phillips Dance Palace, right. Arthur Murray is going to give some of that money to yeah. people. He is doing two things. He's learning to dance, and his money is giving some good stuff. Yeah, what's wrong with that? I'll, I'll tell you what's wrong with it. Uh, if, if he can afford to give a dollar for the person who comes for a dance lesson, maybe he's already making enough money to give a contribution just straight out. He gets a tax deduction from it anyway. You're and the second thing is, the second thing is, uh, who's, who's auditing the funds and how do we know that a dollar for every lesson signed up is being given to muscular dystrophy? Because and who's going to pay for the people who are going to audit this? It's public information. There right. isn't a quarter, a dime, or a penny that crosses that treasurer's desk that isn't audited by every possible form. You can check out anything you want. It all has to be accounted. But well, why do you have such a thing about a guy shouldn't, he's not given a dollar, but he'll give it if you'll also dance at his place. What's wrong with that? What is wrong with it? Maybe he has got a psychological need to get his own crutch. Did you ever think that he's got a problem? That maybe he was taught by a cold mother and father <laughs> it isn't wise or it isn't very mature to give of oneself just voluntarily, but through this particular approach, you're doing it, and you don't look like such a well, softy, or as you've said in your book, a do-gooder. Uh, There's nothing wrong with do-gooder. There's nothing wrong with the charity game, yeah. quote, unquote, as you wrote. But There's it, nothing wrong with caring. There's nothing wrong with corny. I've lived an entire life on corn, crying, spreading my emotion through comedy and through seriousness, and yeah. there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. We need more people in this world to say what they feel in here rather than from up in here. Yeah. But I'll tell you what... <laughs> And I never liked you or your show. Okay. Uh, let me suggest what there might be something wrong with. There might be something wrong with. Can I smoke? Uh, they'll what? You're going to smoke? I guess your question. You got the an American answer. Cancer Society here, and you're going to smoke? Why? That doesn't change. Okay, well, we don't have a. Uh, That's we don't all have, right. I'll put it on. We got to get off like here because do. we got to get these people in here. Okay. Well, th th it's possible, Jerry, that there may be something wrong with.
If you didn't want laughs, why didn't you get yeah. Billy Graham? Yeah. If, uh, <laughs> there may be something wrong with the attitude that develops on the part of many people who preside over charities and other efforts to accommodate the, the people who need help in this country. And that is often an attitude which becomes rigid, arrogant, and messianic, which in effect says, if you criticize me, it's because you're not informed and because you don't care about these ch crippled children. What I'm, or what I'm suggesting is that what we've got now is a system that, de that relies on the goodwill of popular entertainers. And all I'm suggesting is where my limited philanthropic dollar goes should not be determined by a popular comedian. Maybe it ought to be determined by a hematologist or some research committee somewhere. I would have done this if I worked as a carpenter. I would have found the boys. I would have found the stations. I didn't get them because I'm, I am a celebrity, quote, unquote. I got them because I walked into WGN four times a year for seven true, years until true. I got them. Yeah. And that's how I got 213 other stations. Right. That's how I got into the business. And I say the following. If you want to do something and you want to do it badly enough and it's important in your life for whatever those reasons, you can get it done, pal. But most of the world sits back and does these little dissertations like you do, and that gives right. them the right to do nothing. Yeah, but see, in that presentation, you are the hard-working, persevering, caring about the kid person, and I am, I am a person who gives little dissertations. What I, all I'm asking you to do, Jerry, is open up just a little bit, Yeah. say, I'm not the man who agree with me. I am, however, suggesting that maybe what we've got in terms of the charity enterprise and structure in this country is a competitive, ranker-filled, inefficient system that does not speak equitably to the various difficulties that afflict not only young people but older people as well and to make it worse we've got a bunch of greedy bottom line companies coming in here and their motive may have more to do with selling merchandise than with helping the kids and if product a decides to go on your telethon then their competitor has to find something to do that's good and the result is a lot of distraction and a lot of uh, wheel spinning you're generalizing General Foods didn't make all that money last year, but they gave me $6 million worth of advertising. Uh, Do you know about that? No, tell us about it. $6 million worth of print, television time, television space, newspaper space, cards that say if this lady buys this product, she'll save 25 cents, which goes to Jerry's kids. But meanwhile, they're printing all of this, and they're sending out 3 million mailers. They don't have to do that. What are they going to get back? From that 25 cents that they're taking off the basic figure in the first place, that lady's benefiting by it while she's also helping my kids. And General Foods has come out of the closet and letting everyone know that a corporate structure is not all that heartless. What's wrong with that? You didn't do your homework and you didn't find out that most of these men I deal with, de I deal with them on a very emotional level. And I let them know where I'm coming from and I get them. I tell them when I sit down with them, I'm going to charm you to death. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make you believe I am capable of giving you diabetes. I'm so sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll put on a skirt and makeup and go to a bar with you if I can get 20 bucks for my kids. I tell them exactly what I'm gonna do to them and I get them. Mm -hmm. And I would have gotten right. them if I was that right. carpenter. What does General Foods do when the other charities come to them and say, you're doing it for Jerry, do it for us? I haven't the faintest <laughs> idea. I'm not General Foods. But they did enough on a very broad scale until I said, let me let the people know that the, the corporate image is not all that cold and terrible. That's how I got them all. They don't need me to sell hamburgers. 7-Eleven doesn't need me. They're doing $6 billion this year. Why don't they give some of that to your thing without all this pompous, self-righteous, my kids put your dimes and pennies in here. There's nothing pompous or self-righteous about it. It's real, and it's caring, and it's feeling. It'd be so much nicer, though, if they just wrote the Wait, check. Wait, are we the... here to supply Phil Donahue with comfort? Would that make you more comfortable if we do it your way? I think it might make the system more efficient. The system's terrific. I raised $400 million my but, way. Okay, but, in, but how much of that money might have been more properly and more intelligently directed to, the, to other... Intelligence? This is not... I'm not looking for a Nobel <laughs> Peace Prize. I'm looking to help people. All right. And I will get it any way I can get it. And if we have enough people running out there in a messianic way wanting to get it any way they can get it, we've got a lot of grown men whose egos are colliding yeah and the result who will... else do you know that's gonna do what I do 
Who else do you know would have the guts to stand in front of 97 million people and pour his heart out, diminish his own career, because if you're a comedian, you must, by the whole ground rule of theatrics, have your audience think you do indeed trip on that step and that you didn't do it on purpose. You have to let an audience know that if you're a comic, you are literally a little tipsy, a little less than bright. And when I expose myself to the American people this way, it doesn't help my work, but it helps what I'm doing here. So you feel that you make a personal sacrifice with this? There's no question about it. I'm not, that's my choice. That doesn't make me one who should be commended. I make the sacrifice because it's something I need to do. And I'm gonna do it and continue to do it until I beat it, whether it's corny, whether it's self-indulging, whether it's ego, or whether it's corporate, whatever you want to title it. We got an asterisk. It's going to get done, and it's going to get done well. And then one day you're going to invite me here like you did Jonas Salt, and you're going to say, Jerry, it's a pleasure to have you as my guest, because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have had a cure. That would be terrific, wouldn't it? Be wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a very complicated program. Uh, not only is Jerry here, but we have uh, also the people who preside over some other very important, uh, very highly regarded efforts to encourage you to give them your charity dollars. Equally as important. And equally as important. And we hope you'll join us. Noxema Antiseptic Skin Cleanser. It's tough on oil because oily skin is no easy problem. But it's soft on your skin because Noxema adds a propoxylated skin softener other astringents don't. So Noxema is tough on oil. But soft on your skin, that's amazing. That's a new life for your oily skin. Try Noxema Antiseptic Skin Cleanser, the tough astringent. With a soft touch. Ah! Yeah, he won't stand still, I'd rather walk. Relax, Tom. It's a great day for riding. I know. I just feel kind of edgy. My doctor says it's too much caffeine. Then try Sanka brand, a caffeinated coffee. I only like the real McCoy. Sanka is 100% real coffee. Mmm, that's mighty good. Tom, I see you've made friends with that horse. Yep, since I made friends with Sanka. <laughs> Sanka, decaffeinated coffee. Enjoy your coffee and enjoy yourself. Welcome to fall 1981. Lon's gowns look like college. Robes, too. Easy care, snugly young. Transitional penmore sets in dark hues with lots of lace, sensuous and packable. Beautiful satins, lovely to look at, heavenly to wear, wonderful travel companions. The velours, of course, are the loveliest of all. Stunning colors, great design, a joy to behold. We have them all at Starting Point in Perry's Landing, Perrysburg. You won't find them in a Sealy. You won't find them in a Serta. You won't find them in a Stearns and Foster. But you will find them in a Beauty Rest by Simmons. Hundreds of these exclusive Beauty Rest coils. They're wrapped individually so they're free to move separately to give every part of your body the kind of firm, comfortable support you won't find anywhere but here. There's just no rest like a Beauty Rest by Simmons. William Araminy is president of uh, United Way of America, certainly one of the largest, most pervasive. You're looking at a billion dollars a year in any yes, event, sir. huh? Yes, sir. In terms of your what you take in. A billion and a half. Uh, William Araminy, president of United Way. This is a terribly big job. And you, and you, as you know, uh, your organization is not without criticism. How come you get to take money out of my payroll, and why can't the Heart Association, and where do we stop on that one? Okay. The United Way is the most inclusive campaign in America. We include some 37,000 organizations. Uh, we provide some 30 million people give to United Way each year. And we're the most pervasive service system in the country. If you look at all the major charities in the country, including cancer, 
uh, so about 40 units of heart are in local United Ways. So it's a very broad and inclusive campaign. Yeah, the suggestion is that it is not broad and inclusive, that it is white, elitist, and that your money goes to popular causes and that you don't go near women, minorities, and you certainly are not going to give any money to the Puerto Rican Defense Fund or <laughs> anything like that. Well, you, you've hit a lot of things and not in balance. Number one, uh, we, we are the primary support of minority organizations in the country, period. We do support women's organizations. We do provide programs in, in, from, from rape crisis centers to child abuse centers. Uh, all the basic 365 days a year service systems are funded by United Way. Would you support a gay rights organization? Some United Ways do, selectively, a couple of towns. A couple? Yeah. Uh, Let uh, me deal with that. Let me deal with that, Phil. When you're dealing with a consensus workplace fundraising mechanism, the United Way has got to be responsive. In every town, they make their own decisions. It's not a, a national decision or a New York decision or a Washington decision. Every 2,300 communities make those decisions. So the variety of what's included in the United Way is as broad as you can imagine, and those decisions reflect the feelings and the philosophy of the local community. Don't you if they're all Methodists, a lot of Methodist organizations are going to be in there. Don't you fight me, though, if I try to get my charity on the payroll deduction plan at, at a place where you have everybody signed up? That's a different issue. What you're talking here, we don't fight you. What we say is the way to maximize dollars for all charities. You were making the point earlier with Jerry. How do you make those decisions? In our system, a local volunteer committee makes those decisions, not somebody out of someplace else. So the point is that you, the system does allow for inclusion locally. Alan Jonas, chairman of the board of the American Cancer Society. You're raising how much a year about? What kind of dollars are we talking about? About 180 million. 180 million for cancer. Right. Uh, here I come. You ready? I'm ready. You do not stick your neck out. You did not say anything about saccharin. You spend all your time trying to get people like Jerry Lewis and others not to smoke, but you say very little about environmental carcinogens, and you are, you are, in, you are in effect, uh, um, you are intimidated by large companies who want to make sure that you don't bump up against them and make them put filters on their smokestack. Incredible. <laughs> Where did you get that charge? Now, let me, let me be real frank about that. Uh, the American Cancer Society is just not about to take a stand about environmental carcinogens until the jury is in, until it knows for certain. And they do not know for so certain So maybe we don't separate. need those things on our cars, the ones that keep the uh, particulate matter out of the air and reduce... Uh, and reduce pollutants? We don't need those. I'm saying something. Please, don't divert. You've, you've thrown some very important charges here, and I think it is important that your audience knows that the American Cancer Society was the first to take stands against environmental carcinogens. It was the first to discover the relationship between tobacco abuse and lung cancer. Not the second or the third, the first. And as far as asbestos, which is a proven carcinogen, we've taken a very strong stand, although it offended many people who manufactured the But product. you took it pretty late. The first. All right. Uh, but you're saying that we, the, the jury's still out on environmental matters. Yeah. The jury's not out on automobile exhaust. Ask anybody who lives in Los Angeles. The jury hangs in the air. It's visible every day. I got news for you. There is no difference. There is no evidence, scientific evidence, that people who live in smog-infested areas like mine Los Angeles, have a higher incidence of cancer than others who live in the beautiful outdoors of Iowa. Therefore, we cannot make a stand on that concerning cancer until we know. How come you're not in United Way? Oh, there are many reasons, good reasons. First of all, we have a public information message that's as important as our fundraising activity. Right. We're not interested in just making bucks. We've got to recruit an army of people like these to help us do the work. And we can't do that uh, tied under an umbrella. Okay. Well, how, how do you think he'd receive you? If you? Are you on payroll deduction anywhere? We weren't until we worked out a partnership agreement with these well, people. Oh, so you got together percent. and you said, uh, okay, percent. here's mine and yours? And side by side. All right. Uh, Walter Bremont is executive director of the National Black United Fund. And it does not make me a PhD to guess what you're going to say. <laughs> I disagree with Bill Aramone. Tell me. Well, less than 3% of that $1.85, $1.5 billion that he raises annually is allocated back to um, minority organizations, public interest organizations, and organizations which are interested in moving government to deal with substantive issues which um, are tremendously important to people. Secondly, 
um, Bill Aramone and reflective of United Way of America is very active in seeing that organizations like the Black United Fund and other public interest groups do not have an opportunity to participate in payroll deduction programs in the private as well as the public They've sector. tried to stop you, have they? Most assuredly. Uh, some five years ago, the National Black United Fund filed a suit against the federal government because it did not allow the Black United Fund to participate in the combined federal campaign. That's the charitable giving program of, of Uncle Sam. We filed a suit against the government. United Way asked to become involved as a defendant and a vener. Last July, the government said, the court said, that you have discriminated against the Black United Fund. You have violated their First and Fifth Amendment rights. The government refuses to appeal that case. However, United Way of America is still in court trying to prevent us from presenting our fundraising case to people to give them an opportunity to participate in giving if they're so desired. One other point. The other point is that over 60% of all the black employees of Bell Laboratory System have petition management to participate in the same kind of payroll deduction program as United Way. Black Americans, better than the margin of two to one, strongly feel, and that's um, a direct quote from Dr. Kenneth Clark, black Americans, better than two to one, strongly feel that United Way is not representing the interests of black Americans. And, no, uh, you know, okay, but let's just make sure that the, all the federal employees, everybody who works for the federal government, <coughs> has an opportunity to have payroll deduction for United Way on their paycheck, right? That's absolutely right. All right, and you're coming in and you're saying, hold it, we think that the Black United Way ought to have similar treatment. Black United Fund. Black United Fund. <laughs> philosophical, there's a philosophical right. and programmatic difference and between Black United okay. Funds and United Way. And the judge said, yeah, you're right. And the judge says, you're right. But Why not did you only make the... him go to court to get that? Wait, wait, wait a minute now. Very simple. There, is, there are federal rules that the government sets up on standards for inclusion at the federal level. We never said NBUF shouldn't be in the campaign. However, was, the issue, quiet, Walter, for a However, the issue, the issue for 20 years, United Way was the only organization that could participate in making the decisions That's in true. terms of who could not participate. That's not true. It's absolutely not it's true. It's a matter of court Walter, records. Bill. I love you, Walter. But I love you. Now I know why they've sat me here. <laughs> Make a point. Briefly, the, please. We got a break. Okay. The decisions are made well, were made by the federal government, but not by the United Way. It included national health agencies, international social service agencies, the American National Red Cross, and the United Way representing these 37,000 local agencies. Not done by United Way. The other issue is Walter should not preempt services to blacks. That was baloney about that three percent. The basic support system for local black agencies. The blacks are served by YMCA, YW. I'll tell you later when you come back. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Hi, loves. Carlos Summer here, founder of the crusade of love for all of mankind. Our purpose is to move the world to love. And you can help to accomplish this goal for love by thinking, speaking, and acting in friendly ways with family, relatives, friends, associates, and all of our neighbors everywhere. Thank you. You won't find them in a Sealy. You won't find them in a Serta. You won't find them in a Stearns and Foster. But you will find them in a Beauty Rest by Simmons. Hundreds of these exclusive Beauty Rest coils. They're wrapped individually so they're free to move separately to give every part of your body the kind of firm, comfortable support you won't find anywhere but here. There's just no rest like a Beauty Rest by Simmons. First to Papagallo, then back to school in style. Papagallo has everything you want to start the new school year right. Match monogram soft luggage, great accessories, and the most terrific collection of sweaters, turtlenecks, cords, and blazers you could imagine. Of course, you'll need new Papagallo pumps for those dressier occasions, and lots of clogs, loafers, and duck shoes for every day. Papagallo has it all. That's Maddie's Papagallo on West Wayne and Maumee, and the shop for Papagallo at Cricket West in Toledo. You'll love us. We're friendlier. This summer, you can still begin to shape up, feel good, and look great at Big Daddy. Now, from the world's number one health club chain, you can enjoy five aerobic visits for $5. And Big Daddy will donate that $5 to help fight muscular dystrophy. Men and women, call now and get acquainted with the only health club chain offering dual facilities for both men and women seven days a week. But hurry, final two weeks to get five aerobic visits for $5. Work out and help out at Big Daddy, the leader in its field.
I would like to know how much money they get in their job doing this good work. Is, uh, it, is it raised by a percentage of how much they raise, or is it a flat rate? Want to talk, speak to that, if you would. Uh, well, let, let me start and say I get zero. I'm a volunteer, I'm a businessman, and I put this time in, as Jerry Lewis does, with sheer love. And you, you have no obligation to tell us what you make, other than you are salaried people, but is your salary in any way hooked to the amount of money? Oh, absolutely not. That's absolutely against the rules. Uh, these are salaries that are determined by volunteers in each community, and uh, they make that decision. However, uh, it is well to point out that the middle range salary of the United Way directors around the country is about $75,000 a year. Absolutely not true, Walt. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, the, the number happens to be $28,000. Well, if, if and, I'm, and only reporting, I'm only, I'm only reporting... Me. Not what, true. I'm only reporting the salary of Madison, Wisconsin. Not true, Walter. $75,000. The executive director makes more than Walter, the governor of the true. state. Let's talk about the executive director of Minneapolis, Phil, Minnesota, that makes $57,000 a The point, the a point year. we're talking about here is what so does it cost? there's a broad range of... Walter, would you keep quiet for a minute? I cannot. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you have to be honest with the people in terms of what Walter. professional Walter. social Walter. workers who run United Ways <laughs> make in terms of providing oh, services for me. Uh, why don't you do what he does? 77 million bucks, here's a one-man man who is clearly ambitious and caring and uh, works, uh, doesn't worry about the clock. And Why don't you all do that instead of all this? You gotta worry about all that bureaucracy, all those people. Well, listen, Get yourself a popular person in a telephone. You know, you talked earlier about the inefficiency of volunteerism and it's sometimes it's uh, competitiveness. And that's like saying that the automobile is no darn good because sometimes it's driven carelessly or in the wrong direction. I'm telling you that this country needs volunteerism and you don't accomplish volunteer activity. Thank you. And how come we don't have volunteerism in other areas? We don't, we don't have telethons or flagpole sit-a-thons or rock-a-thons or walk-a-thons for runways at airports where wealthy businessmen want to land their private jets, we take it right out of the taxpayer's salary. We don't go door to door for war begging for money. Why do we have to do this for crippled children? Doesn't it bother you that we have to do this Chinese circus in order to raise money for, the, all, for our most precious resource, our children, and yet, when it comes to the instruments of, uh, of, uh, that are used by the ruling class, the wealthy people, we take it. We, there's not even an option. You're they just take it right out of the point. Our... You're missing the whole point. Listen, some of us do not always agree with our government's priorities. We spend 100 million bucks on German chemical warfare in this country, and that's what we spend trying to find the cause of, of right. cancer and the prevention of it. So what do we do? A group of us citizens can get together and increase that budget by 20% by, through the American Cancer Society. We're objective. We don't have to run for re-election. If we don't like something, it doesn't matter to us that we come from a tobacco-growing state. We can say what we think about but tobacco. You know abuse. what I see, though? I see rancor between the United Way does not talk to the Red Cross. Oh, not sure. Leukemia too. is mad at the oh. Cancer Society. No, that's because you're <laughs> And that's cystic you're fibrosis is upset no. because the uh, no. upper respiratory disease people are making it. There is competition. And there is inefficiency. Yes, there is competition, Phil. Absolutely, there's competition. And it's not in the best interest of the kids. Well, wait, that's stop now. You're making the next step. Yes, there is competition. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a free enterprise society. It's a pluralistic society. You cannot, in a democracy, command that if this lady cares about a certain Ill illness or a certain disease or some other factor or of child abuse or some other thing, that she doesn't have the right to get her friends and organize and raise money for that. That's her privilege. In this society, you have that right. And I don't think it's wrong to say it's competitive. It's okay to be competitive. I really appreciate that statement by Bill Ermoney, that we live in a free market system, that diversity is tremendously important. Why does Walter hate me? I, well, I don't hate you. I mean, we're good, uh, I mean, we're professional <laughs> colleagues. And I would just ask Bill Ermoney and United Ways of America to extend that same principle to work sites where people like you and I can make a decision in terms of where a Fine. charitable dollar goes. And where goes. do we stop? 
Where do we stop? Thank you. We shouldn't uh, stop anywhere. No, I, I'm, the, I'm the guy that owns the company. My grandfather founded it. Now I got 4,000 employees. Bill. And the guy comes in, and you come in, and you say, hold it, the black people are not. And then the guy comes in from some other group, and then the women are here, and they want to know why they can't have a payroll reduction. And pretty soon, your check on every employee <laughs> is this long, and you're asking employees to make a decision about charities, and the result is total chaos, inefficiency, and nobody gets it. Employees that. should have a right to make a choice about the charity which they would like to give to. Further, 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 if you look at the United Way system, employees who give to the United Way do not participate in the decision making in terms of where those dollars go. Right, let's get Jerry in. You wanted to make what point, Jerry? If you want to talk about honest, I don't think you can be honest based on expediency. I sat in a room with the three of you before we came out here. And for 25 or 30 minutes, there was some chatter, a little trivial dialogue, getting to know one another. We had some coffee. I maintain, Walter, you're guilty of not attacking Bill on the subject in that room then and every time you're with him. Every time I see Bill, I attack him on that There issue. were 30 minutes that went by in that room where you could have utilized that time. Well, this is the first time in three years that we've had an opportunity to be together, so we were feeling one another out. I yeah. see. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Folks, meet J.D. Parker, future business executive. Uh, J.D.'s a little upset today because someone's dressed him in a saggy diaper that leaks. Well, here's Huggies, J.D. Huggies are form-fitting disposable diapers with soft, gentle elastic to help stop leaking. So Huggies hug to help keep babies dry and comfortable. Thick, absorbent Huggies diapers help keep babies dry. And uh, that should be good for business, right, J.D.? Over 25,000 people have enjoyed a banquet, cocktail party, wedding reception, or meeting in the last year at the top of the tower. Here in the River Room, we can accommodate up to 30 guests for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. For larger groups, our main room can accommodate up to 300 guests. The tower is perfect for a banquet or a theme party of your choice. If you have a special event coming up, call the top of the tower and we'll give your guests a party they'll never forget. The top of the tower also features the finest lunches in Toledo, Monday through Friday. Dam Shoulders is having their women's winter coat sale with reductions of 15 to 20 percent. Come in from your sun fun long enough for some cool savings on the new collection of women's winter coats. While the temperature soars, prices are dropping at Dam Shoulders. Shop now for summer savings on women's winter coats. It's your opportunity to save on designer classics and casuals. 15 to 20 percent off now through Labor Day. Put a label on value at Dam Shoulders, Starlight Plaza, Sylvania, and Perry's Landing, Perrysburg. Stronger in coverage from the nation's capital. Norm Wagey with local news from the nation's newsmakers. Exclusively on 13 Strong. Stronger. Through the search station, we can receive reports from Washington and anywhere around the world. We were the only news operation in the city with one, but now we have two. 13 Strong. Stronger. More Donahue following station identification. It's a wooden water double feature. For a limited time, we're offering incredible savings on two different beds. The Carefree or the Saguaro can be yours for just $1.99. The Carefree, classic in design. The Saguaro, straight line with a modern look. Both available in king or queen with stained and lacquered pine frame and headboard, fully guaranteed and ready for immediate pickup. Cash in on the savings during the wooden water double feature. The Carefree or the Saguaro, just $1.99. Unmatched comfort from a wooden water near you. It's show and sell days for Back to School at Southwick. With a whole new line of fall merchandise, you're sure to find all your back to school needs. Southwick, Reynolds Road, north of Heatherdown. Kick off the football season with TV Guide's Pro Football Preview. Coach George Allen predicts which teams will take it all. Litter costs Ohio taxpayers about $50 million a year. Join in. Clean up Ohio literally. One postal contract settled. That story at noon. A question was raised earlier about uh, entertainers. Do entertainers donate their time or do they actually get paid for it? Do entertainers donate their time or do they get paid for it? Are you talking about the entertainers on the telethon? They donate their time, do you? All right. Uh, yes. You should know. 
that's uh, one of the wonder one of the many wonderful things about Jerry's telethon. It should be stated, however, that that is not the case in all telethons. I have been personally offered five thousand dollars to host a local telethon. This and is not to say that that's no, scandalous and that everybody should nothing, go to hell, but they should know that. There's nothing wrong with an awful lot of the other telethons that will raise dollars to do the job that's so necessary. But they don't have the kingpin, the head man, or the center post. And as Phil said earlier, get a celebrity and do a telethon. That's not, it's not all that easy. You've got to get that celebrity and put 32 years of concern in them. And if you can do that this year, you can have one next year. I don't know how you get 32 years of building not only the organization, but the reason for being in less than 32 years. Um, speaking about uh, telethons, I, I find telethons um, kind of repulsive. I hate them. I will not return them on. I turn them on, it looks like a zoo. I just hate them very much, all of them. I feel that the entertainers involved have a lot more money than I do. Why don't they put up some of that money and anybody else that wants to, and let's just get these things off the air. I think they're a big show for all the entertainers to come out, hug each other, kiss, hi, I love you, man, let's get on these, these all these charities. I, I just can't stand watching that. I, I never get to turn it on. I've got to get you an autograph photograph of Eva Braun. I'm sure you'll enjoy. <laughs> Ooh. 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 See, see, if you criticize me, you're a Nazi. Uh, That's uh, what you're saying. No, oh, yes, no. you are. Wait a and minute. And Jerry, we're never oh, gonna, no. we're not gonna make it if... Uh, Phil, did you hear the lady's statement? I did. She says she thinks that there's a lot of pompous, ego-satisfying people running uh -huh. out in order to stand next yeah. to a triple yeah. top so that they'll be popular. That's of course there are. I'm not saying there are not, but the premise is the vital issue. I can't stand here and tell you that all of those people care deeply and are really involved. I can tell you, though, that what they're doing and their being there, the return for what they do is the issue. Yeah. That's the vital point. I can't stand here and I, I'm not right, about not to defend the character and the morality and the integrity of all of these performers. I'm sure the woman is right in many cases. Yeah, there are a lot of sincere but she's people generalizing. Yes, yes, okay, she and any time that kind of a generalization is made, but you have to hit back with equally a generalization. Well, but I think that you're absolutely Oh, no, I bought 300 of those photographs. I can't move them. <laughs> Overstuffed. Yes. Yeah. I wonder how you can justify emotional manipulation for any means and for any ends. How can you say that this rate that kind of emotional manipulation, more so than, than like politicians doing the same thing. People resent it. Uh, what people? Emotional, I mean, I mean uh, if you disagree with me, then uh, somehow you what? You're less than an honorable person? I mean, exactly. It's, that, it's yeah. saying that you can, it's the sort of if thing If you don't that, support the neutron bomb, it must be because you're pink or red or something. They, you know, they laugh about preachers in the South doing that. It's emotional ma manipulation. It's like trying to get stir up people's emotions and make them feel like they're but not the Jerry is saying if he doesn't do that who's going to and and what are you going to do about all those kids out there who need this help all this all the paraphernalia that goes with that disease the uh, the the important uh, professional uh, the cost of the labs white mice have quadrupled in cost in the lab why can't you just present it reasonably and say listen this is because the because it doesn't work you won't raise 77 million dollars is that true can you go out and re reasonably and say, now, friends, we have, with a, with a, black, with a blue background? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Honey, you cannot legislate someone's heart. There's no way you can do that. I don't know, though, that it's ethical to try to manipulate them either. Ethical? Where ethical. do ethics come in when you see children playing ball and there's one in a wheelchair that never will? How do you deal with that? Well, the question, Jerry, is, is this the best way to speak to those issues? What then? Go with the government? No, is that what I, you're saying? Well, well, look, you know, I, this is hardly the time to be making this point, but nobody suggests we go with the, any with anybody but the government when it comes to highways. You made when it, it in your, comes to the made Pentagon. It in your book that all of these children should be taken care of by the government. Uh, what I said was, I thought. Well, here's what I said. Want me to read it? Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 let me just get this in. I, I'm merely wondering about our priorities. Why do we have to, why do we have to go door to door, shine shoes, and do all this disc jockey stuff in order to raise money for crippled children? And, and, and when they take money away from, I think, I think, Casper, I think we should take money out of our checks to speak to the, uh, out of paychecks, income tax, to pay for crippled children, and Casper Weinberger should have a telethon to pay for war.
Ah, we'll be back in just a moment. Before you know it, it'll be time for that first day back to school. So now's the time to get out and get all the things you'll be needing, like pencils and pens, notebooks and paper, binders and calculators. You'll find them all at your nearest Lane Drugstore, and you'll find them for less. Dictionaries, hair dryers, lunch boxes, and school bags. Everything you need. They're at Lane's now. So stock up today while there's still time. Bye, Mom. Lane's Drugstores. Be a heroine, catch the spirit of a day in the country, or an unabashedly feminine, ladylike presence in true women dressing from Jeffrey Bean. Come discover for yourself on Friday, August 28th and Saturday, August 29th. Meet Mr. Tony Petzl from New York City from 10 till 5 at Margie Roth's 5700 Monroe Street, Starlight Plaza. Attention mothers, would you like to turn your children's gently used toys, clothing, babies, and children's furniture into cash? Many Penny sells gently used items and needs what your children all grow for consignment in their Sylvania area shop. Bring your toys, clothing, furniture. Many Pennies will sell them and return 50 to 60% of the resale price to you. Stop by Many Pennies Tuesday through Saturday, 10 till 5, at 5201 Monroe Street behind Pier 1, or call 885-2888. I think our society, this day and age, what we're actually, what it's boiling down to, is unless it hits your home, we ignore it. I really feel that's the way we do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Who is the one who makes up the rules where um, when you're working, somebody asks you to fill out a form, and if you don't sign it, you have to see the supervisor, and you have to give a certain percent That's happened to you? check. Yes, it has. Every year that I used to work, yeah. I think you're four square against that, are you not, oh, Mr. Aramone? Absolutely, absolutely, totally opposed to it. Well, wait, wait a minute. Can I, I collected in an office for United Way, and it, the, it started with the general manager. Gone. He went down to the supervisor. He won 100 percent. Then he goes to the office, and then he goes to the office and the, the um, people out in the factory. They have to give their 100 percent full day's pay, not a dollar, a full day's pay or else you're not going to get overtime, you're not going to get uh, any benefits at all. Hey, that's absolutely wrong. And it is wrong. I have a choice if I want to buy a hamburger. I don't have a choice for, a, you know, this is my job. So you're for Jerry on this one. Yeah, I can turn my TV. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to say for Jerry Lewis that I agree about the paternalistic idea. I think it's great. I think we need more you support well, Jerry, I, and you wish him well with In the that, I really do. But the other thing I want to say is about United Way. I happen to know that someone in United Way in the Chicago area has designed a button for hearing impaired people. And it's, it'd it's so, be a marvelous uh, thing. You'd like to get United Way to promote it? They should move Fine, on. we'll be happy okay. to do that. Yeah. I'd like to ask the man from the Cancer Society, how much of that $180 million actually goes for research? Uh, the answer to that is about 31%. But listen. Uh, no, that's correct. Uh, that's important money because it's different from what the federal government spends. But don't think research is the only thing desperately needed in the fight against cancer. We must serve the cancer patient. We must educate the public that the, it is a hopeful disease, that you can recover from it, and how to recognize the danger signals. Yes. And we spend everything but about 12% uh, on those efforts. I like to direct my money to the places I like. but. Um, We've got some friends of ours that are, have muscular dystrophy, and the boys are affected by it. The girls don't have it. And my father died from kidney disease, and my mother's got arthritis. So I like to direct my money and know where it's going. You're able to do that? A little bit <laughs> on our budgets. 
Yeah, but, but what's, the, what's your point? So, so you don't want what? To put it all in one pot? I don't like United Fund. Well, United Fund would like you to know that you can earmark your money. Good, because in our town, I do not see anybody saying, come be on our board. They pick from the big corporations, you be here, the president be here. Right. So. All right. Uh, yes. We better think of something, because America is becoming fed up with the doorbell ringing, and every other day there's somebody out there with his hat in his hand. Earlier, these gentlemen were speaking about com competition between their yeah. organizations. I don't think competition has a place in charity. Well, but if you don't do it, then you don't motivate people to go out and work harder. Why can't these gentlemen and all the other people in their other charities organize among themselves and become one large group? And then who's going to decide how much who gets what? Everybody gets an equal share. But you don't need as much money. The but dizzy. If, you can't because not everybody... There are more, there are more dystrophic children than there are uh, Tay-Sachs children, for example. So should Tay-Sachs get as much as muscular dystrophy? All diseases are important, and even if there's only one child who dies from it... We'll be back in just a moment. Write this down. Gel. Gel? Mm-hmm. Short for gelatin. Is there gelatin in here? Yep. Now write acryl. Short for acrylic. Now you've got... Gelacryl? Gelacryl. The first combination of gelatin and acrylic. It's what new Quencher nail glaze is made with. It's very shiny and very strong. Try it. Wow. Gelatin and acrylic. Now write Quencher nail glaze. No, sir. I'm saving my Quencher nail glaze for my nail. Experience true art in dining. Escape to Japan at N Japanese Steakhouse. N Japanese Steakhouse, Monroe at Talmadge, Toledo. Westgate, the center of good shopping with everything you need and want at Secor and Central. Joe Neal opens the pages to best fall fashions. Country separates or sophisticated suiting. Famous name tops. Feminine dressy. Split skirt, knickers, spiffy tops. Everything that's newsy in outerwear. Sale price. Joe Neal, where the customer is someone special. Jim's Buster Brown shoes gives young feet care they deserve. On sale now, $25 thrifty shoes, $16.90. $27 to $31 growing shoes, $22.90. Protect growing feet. Shop Jim's Buster Brown, Westgate. We're gonna go Hawaiian. Hawaiian Punch is the taste, the one and only taste that really goes Hawaiian. Hawaiian Punch is more than just a cold drink. It's seven natural tropical fruits come together with 10% fruit juice for the taste everybody loves. Go Hawaiian, go Hawaiian. And now say aloha to delicious new tropical fruit. Aloha tropical fruit. A new flavor, Donnie, luscious new tropical fruit. Aloha tropical fruit. Right. If you would like a written transcript of today's program, send $2.50 in check or money order to Donahue Transcripts, Box 2111, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45201. Include the subject or the name of the guest with your request. Uh, Jerry, for so little time. Charity is not a game, and I quote a great man who said, if another man's child is threatened, and you move not services provided and promotional fees paid by the following ever wonder why you're not seeing rebate ads from volvo simple when you build the right kind of car you don't have to pay people to buy it super scrubbable true test easy care latex flat wall and trim finish perfect for both walls and woodwork sold only by true value hardware stores and home centers 